corn, this was all corn stalks. And so <clears throat> from this post to the north was a, was a grazing mix, and from the post to the sunflowers was a high carbon mix. And so we started, we were kind of mob grazing and run them down through, and then you can see uh, we got about halfway, and this we had run into this a year ago. The, it has a spring forage barley, and it got really mature, and the cattle quit eating it. So we swathed it to try to keep it in that stage. That's why we swathed all this. So then <clears throat> you can see where I quit spraying, where the green is. We grazed up to there, and then the grass greened up down at Wild Horse. So we moved the cattle off and took them down there. And they're coming back in a couple of weeks. Now. Coach on this end, but it stayed, which, it uh, stayed cool so late that we didn't get the cover crop in like we wanted. To see. And uh, I mean, uh, so, you can kind of see that. But even so, I mean, oh, this is yeah. some yeah. reason why you couldn't graze this before it got to the stage of heading up. We just didn't have enough animals and time to get but it. You done. didn't roll this down or anything. You no, just swapped just it. Just swapped we got a guy that uh, it was uh, all kosher. Yeah. What he did was he he swapped it, and then he he had his wife come in right behind him with a roller and just, just to mush it to the ground so it wouldn't blow away. Oh, okay. okay. And to re and it's it's beautiful underneath. I mean that. But which is I think that's isn't that coinage? Could be. It very well could be. We had both. Uh, at, between Atwood, Kansas, and Colby, Kansas, there's uh, there were. I don't know if they're still alive. There's two brothers over there that um, back in the 80s had gone there to go to Coyote and stuff, you know. And, and the, all the wildlife were always around their place, okay? And I'd go by their place. Well, what is out there in that wheat field? And there were. There were turnips and radishes out there in their wheat field all the time. That was back then. And everybody, yeah, they're kind of yeah. they're kind of different. Yeah. Some of the things we're looking at. Well, what's a question you have here? Okay, I guess our ultimate goal is we we want to reduce our dependence on chemicals and fertilizer. Mm -hmm. um, all a Gabe Brown. Mm -hmm. Now I don't know that I'll ever achieve that level, but if I could get half of that. So I guess my thing is, if we took an obvious, you know, soil that's obviously different, I mean, and poorer, and if we can make things work here, it'll work everywhere. So my is, is this one of your worst fields? Is that what you're saying? This sec, this is that section I was okay. talking about, and okay. you can see it lays very nice. Mm -hmm. No blow ridges, no nothing, and it'll be, it'll be 20% less, 15% less. So the question is how to revive what, it, how to regenerate what, yeah, it. Yeah, what do I need to do to revive it? And we're kind of in a dark room feeling around right now. I mean, I go and I listen to the guys, and, and I, I believe cover crops are, are an answer, and I believe grazing cover crops even makes more sense. But we're kind of using the scattergun approach to, how, to mm -hmm. what we're doing here. What's not happening? <laughs> yes. Um, the plants aren't forming a relationship with microbes in the soil. Okay. The roots of that plant are as clean as they can possibly get. There is no biological activity happening around that plant. So even though you're putting cover crops in, I, mean, I take it, you know, obviously that's not, not something you've sown. But see, look at the clean root system on this. So no feathers yeah. are on it. Is that what I'm... Oh, there's nothing. There is no sheaths. soil sheaths on the, those roots. You, you shouldn't be able to see the roots of a plant. It should match the soil yeah, color. This right. one totally is the colored. only little. It's got a few little. little like again. if we teased it off, it's probably got a few little bits. But actually, even just feeling that soil. Had it been? It's has like, this had uh, like fertilizer got, on it? What's the organic matter content of the soil? Um, um, I can look that up. Um, fertilizer <laughs> would have top, been topsoil. The structure is is oh, blocky so the too. Surface is I mean, sealed. this is right. Yeah. This surface, yeah. so it's crusted and yeah. it's blocky. So. As you already know, this the stall's got no structure. Right. Yeah, you already know right. that. It also has no biological activity. We can see from looking at this plant. Be interesting actually to maybe to dig under one of these. Um, Kosher. Kosher. It's still a little bit alive. And see, well, this one that's a bit more alive. See whether that's doing. I mean, obviously that's a. An, but it's a lot an, softer an, than an, where we were just at. Yeah, oh, there you go. An invader species that's in this right. niche for a reason because maybe it can survive better in the soil than other things can. So it may have some mechanism that enables it. As Joel said, it's softer there already. 
this is under this one. Right? So here we go. Look, the soil structure yeah. here is heaps better under this plant than it was under that one. Had no structure at all yeah. where it was. So we can see the, the aggregates. Cut granular structure. Yeah, that nice. These, these are what we want to see. You know, if your soil is all like that, then the water's going to infiltrate really quickly. Okay. Um, so this plant is doing some. Ah, here we go. Look at all the little tiny. Look at all the little um, the the uh, root hairs coming out, and you see the little. Um, that little nodule there on the roots and there's another one there so what's yeah. happening inside those nodules that's great Joel you're doing a good job he's a plant whisperer hey you didn't know <laughs> hey look look oh this is perfect not even planned beautiful that is beautiful see all those little lumps sticking yeah. to the roots they are just like nodules on a legume okay. this plant is green because it's fixing nitrogen uh, it's not a legume, but it's fixing nitrogen in these little lumps. So inside these aggregates, we have a higher moisture content than in the rest of the soil. We have a lower partial pressure of oxygen in the rest of the soil. And there's liquid carbon, like there's energy from photosynthesis going into the aggregate. So this plant is, that's why kosher is growing so well here. And look how it's why you have to have a living root in the soil okay, in the plant as long as it doesn't have to be a kosher living room yeah right? i know you, yeah but that's why this plant it's is better here. than zero you always though, or have true. to ask you know why is this plant here and why is this plant oh look this is just fantastic why is this plant doing better than There's anything else hole, here because because it can do this i think so it this can do this okay All right. so you need to get a spade and Just look at what's bit. happening under your plants that little that poor little plant there is just absolutely not talking to the soil. And you can see how compacted the soil, like it's structureless, the soil is there compared to this. Um, so yeah, what, what can you put in here that can do what this plant can do? <laughs> Will the stock eat this? Yeah. 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 So what's wrong with this then? Well, it's it's a weed. <laughs> well, <laughs> why, why I, you know, in, a, in the traditional mindset, it's, it's probably a weed, yeah, it's but, probably more in the mind that it's a weed because well, there I, is forage and, kosher and that's sold. We do have like, resistance I mean, it issues. It feels soft to me. Yeah. Like, why, why would that's why they like that? Yeah, they, they like one it. One of the problems is it doesn't play nice with other plants. It seems to be an increaser, so it dominates its environment. And but so I think that's one of the. Look, well, it can it's survive in this environment. It's successful, but um, I think <laughs> you can see here it's the only thing that's that's yeah, thriving, and, and so it seeds a lot. So I think that's one of the. the Why is it the only one, two, three. Oh, yeah. Organic matter, one point eight. One point eight. That's a good earthworm. Yeah. <laughs> we are seeing a few more of those guys. Oh, good. Yeah, the, the, the top here, these are all. Yeah. So this is, earth, <coughs> is this is earthworm castings. Isn't yeah, it? that's this cat, that's what I. Castings? Yeah. yeah. So great. So this is what will give you the structure on the surface with, with lots of organic matter that um, with worms will bring up that the worm castings will help to really structure the surface. So what we have is a fallow period here, kind of, and our soil's dying. Oh yeah, look at that. Of another earthworm. I'm anxious to see what this looks like though. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see yeah. virtually no roots. Hmm. Well, you can see it I sprouted right there's the head right there yeah. that it sprouted from. So it wasn't. <clears throat> it's not one individual, there's several yeah. there, so maybe the, it look virtually no roots. But hey, the roots are doing something, are they? Yeah, there's stuff on them. Uh, not a lot though. You should not, not be up. Actually, there's a little bit of a one there. You shouldn't. No, no, maybe they're not too bad. Yeah, they're doing something. Remember, if it's green, that it's it's got to be forming a relationship with biology to some extent. Yeah, it's not too bad. It actually, has got. It is actually forming some yeah, little nodules, but those roots are incredibly clean, especially for a broadleaf. As a general rule, you know, like if I pull these broadleafs out of my garden at home, I can't see the roots. They're just totally covered in um, in riser sheath. And the and plants we we're looking at the other day were just totally covered in riser sheath. I mean, this has got some riser sheath. Riser sheath. You call it riser sheath. Riser sheath is when okay. the roots covered like that. Okay. And mm -hmm. then these are aggregates. Okay. Macro aggregates. They're, and that aggregate will be form. There'll be micro aggregates that form first. They're almost too small to see. Then when it gets to the size that you can see it, like say up to an eighth of an inch across, then that's a macro aggregate, which is lots of micro aggregates. But the riser sheath on the outside of that root there, which is just soil particles all stuck to the root. Yep. yep. There's nitrogen forming inside that as well. So the riser sheath serves to 
reduce the oxygen, the amount of oxygen around that root so that the bacteria that fix nitrogen can actually fix nitrogen in that environment. So they can't fix nitrogen just out in the soil um, because for a start they've got no energy. They're, they're getting their energy from the sun right. through photosynthesis. The plant photosynthesizes, makes sugars and feeds all the, all the microbes in the root zone. So they're getting their energy and then they need moisture which also they'll be higher moisture levels inside there than and high moisture levels inside these aggregates and outside and they need a low partial pressure of oxygen to fix nitrogen. Oh, root, like right. the root's under there, yep. but you know, well, it's got all this soil sticking to it. That's great. That's what you want to see. So you need to dig up your plants and see what they're, what they're doing. What they're saying to you. It's just and a bit of um, a clod, little big clod that's stuck on got there. A, yeah, but and meh. Yeah, there's a little bit of something going on, but, but it's not good. Okay, so, but they're what, what, what you're saying, brassicas aren't really. Uh, well, no, they, they don't not. associate I mean, you at home. put brassicas in for diversity reasons, right? right. And also for mineral, livestock, yeah, you know, they they're good for grazing. Accumulate the minerals. They right. accumulate minerals, and yeah. I mean that's why you put it in as a mix. Whereas if you had like straight canola or something, I mean, it's if you keep going canola, 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 it's not good for the soil. But like compare that to the to that weed. Yeah. You know, to what to the, the weed was doing. So why is the kosher? Why is there so much here? Right. Seeing that, and I'm needing my bifocals. All right, you see, right here, this root going into the root, the worm hole. Oh, gotcha, hole. gotcha. See that, and utilizing that, the nutrients that have been placed there by the worms. Right, right. I'm gonna open this up. Oh, there's a big one. Gee, you can see those. That's all. What all these were doing. Look at that. That was just. Well, Following the root, okay, the yeah. wormholes, the right, roots are right, right. Waiting right into that, um, into that platey sort of stuff there. You see, what we were looking at was the the way the dirt's sticking around the roots, which means that it's there's carbon, like sugars, coming out of the roots of the plant to um, to feed the biology, and it's the um, nitrogen-fixing bacteria will be living in that rhizosheet. sheet. Right. So. The rhizosphere is the area around the root, but if the root's covered, so these roots, like the one we dug out before, all the roots were covered in, uh, they just actually sort of look like worms or something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> They're all covered in covered in soil. So you, can, you can't actually see the colour of the root because it's got got material on it. Actually, that's a really beautiful branch. Like, look how, look how, um, how fine that root system is as well. It's fantastic, isn't it? So what's happening in there is biological nitrogen fixation with free-living nitrogen-fixing bacteria inside that riser sheet. So if you don't see material sticking to the roots like that, it's not happening. And that's why that plant can grow like that hmm. um, without so adding so in. So basically we don't seed. have to have a legume. If this is happening, you don't have to have a legume. Right? Really? But the thing about legumes is that they are higher in trace elements and minerals than grasses. Grasses are great for soil building. Nothing builds soil like a grass plant. And I think we've seen that time and time again over the last couple of days when we look under different kinds of plants like um, like your mustards, or your brassicas and things that they, they're not building soil like the grasses are but it's the other things that have high mineral content. That's why you want a mixture of um, grasses to build the soil but your other plants for trace elements and stuff for your livestock. The younger plant was probably doing more soil building than this more mature one because when they're young it's the roots, it's these new actively growing roots are the ones that put out the most carbon to feed the biology because when a plant's first starting out it has to get enough nitrogen to build itself to build its leaves and things so that's when it'll most actively be so if you found a really old finesse plant you won't find this around the roots because it doesn't need to do it anymore it's already it's already grown up you know it's already built all its leaf structure and everything Christine, we haven't talked about this at a couple of the stops, but we at the first stop we talked about the percent of nitrogen in the air, and then it, it's a little different in the soil, but it's still a, a vast amount. Um, and so, how how is that nitrogen going from gas and getting into those plants? Okay, so if you take well one square meter, which is pretty much the same as one square yard, and you look at the weight of the column of atmosphere above that one square meter, from here to the top of the atmosphere weighs 10 tons. That's like in metric terms. Uh, so a hectare, uh, and that's 78% nitrogen, so that means that, that 10 tonnes of atmosphere contains 7.8 tonnes of nitrogen. So above this area here, you have 7.8 tonnes of nitrogen gas. 
so you, you don't need to add any nitrogen when you've got 7.8 tonnes of nitrogen gas sitting above one, one square metre. Yeah, but, it, but that's yeah. a gap, so yeah. it has to be turned into ammonia, which is what the bacteria in the soil will take that nitrogen gas and turn it into ammonia. It's exactly the same as what you buy if you use anhydrous ammonia or you go and if you use urea, it's a mixture of ammonia and nitrate and, you know, so basically the bacteria will do, but they're doing it for free and they're doing it in your soil and it can't escape. So once it's in there in that biological community, it'll get turned into amino acids in there, so it can't leach out, can't do that a lot. And Jay talked about that a lot. It's a lot more stable form. It's a stable form. Of exactly. nitrogen.